Last week we were exploring Banff and its wonderful scenery, now we are en route to Jasper, stopping at the Emerald Lake for two nights before taking the famous Icefield Parkway up to Jasper, finishing our tour at Pyramid Lake and another amazing canyon walk. Emerald Lake lies on the boundaries of Alberta and British Columbia province in Yoho National Park. In fact, it's just inside the BC province. After the excitement and exertions of Banff, this was our two days to relax pottering around the lake. About 10 kilometers off Highway 1 at Field, the Emerald Lake Lodge offers a quiet retreat away from the distractions perched across a low bridge on the banks of the lake known as Emerald Lake for the summer colours of the waters. You can walk the trails around the lake in a circular loop from the lodge and enjoy the partially frozen streams and mountains. or a few kilometers down the road is the roaring Kicking Horse River, where the power of the water has created what's called the natural bridge. Once a roaring waterfall, the softer rock found below the hard limestone eroded faster over time. This caused the rock to crack and widen, allowing the flow to divert below rather than over. Having eaten in the lodge and relaxed for two days, it was time to move on and start an epic 230 km drive across the Icefield Parkway. Unfortunately, the weather decided to dump some snow overnight, the car was clean the evening before. This was going to make our journey a bit of a problem. So our car was clear of snow last night. This is how much snow has fallen overnight and continues to fall. Not great, as we need to make quite a long trip today, but uh, we'll see how we go. Conditions weren't ideal to make the run, and I was apprehensive. Will was very confident. The weather forecast for the day wasn't great, but the staff at the starting checkpoint told us that if we took it easy, we should be fine, so we headed off. I want to mention as well that we took necessary precautions of carrying food and water. We also called ahead to our new hotel to let them know roughly what time we should be arriving and where we were coming from. This is really important because there's no phone signal and unless somebody stops to help you, if you break down, you're on your own.
The blue skies told us we were through the worst and the first set of lights in 230 kilometers meant that after four and a half hours, we'd made it to Jasper. Jasper lies on the Athabasca River. It made it a great place to set up a trading post in the 1800s, using the river as the highway to transport goods. The railroad came through at the turn of the 20th century and it became a railway town. The government noted the incredible natural beauty in the area in 1913, forming Jasper National Park as we know it today. We are here for just a few days in the low season, so the town, normally full of tourists, walking the streets and trinket shops are nowhere to be seen. It feels like a small, sleepy town that just has some great bars and restaurants. The Jasper Railway Station highlights its heritage with a huge mountain-type engine built in 1923, used by Canadian National in freight and passenger services. It pulled the Canadian version of the Orient Express at 100 miles an hour through the rugged Rockies. By the 1950s, steam was out of favour and diesel engines took over the job. So we've come to Maline Canyon. It's about five kilometers outside Jasper. Uh, an amazing canyon in the center of this mountain here that we're gonna have a look at. It looks pretty amazing. So we'll have a little walk around. There's some loops and things we can do. Uh, we've got our crampons on. It's freezing cold, but come with us. The Maline Canyon, if I pronounce it correctly, is the deepest canyon in all of the Rockies, over 50 meters down at some points. You can do guided tours deep in the heart of the frozen canyon at this time of year, but we'll be taking a more sedate walking trail along the rim, crossing six bridges along the route. Oh my God. Oh sorry, that is some canyon. Let's see how he manages these stairs. Ah, <laughs> you're better at me than on those. It's pretty icy. Yeah. So as we head further into the walk and we're going down into the canyon to the number five bridge, uh, it really is getting colder. You can feel the drop in temperature as you dip down inside the canyon itself.
Our walk ended at the fifth bridge, as we'd already walked for nearly two hours, and trying to get to the sixth bridge would add another hour, not forgetting we had another two hour hike to get back to the car. So we cheated a little bit, and having returned to the car, we drove to the last bridge, number six, to see the canyon waters join the Alabasca River. A long day, but wow, was it rewarding to achieve. Our lodgings for the last part of the trip was a few kilometers outside of town, in an area well worth stopping by as part of your visit to Jasper. There are two lakes to see. Patricia Lake is the one we are passing on the left now, so we drive to our hotel. Let's take a quick stop. The lake is completely frozen at this time of year, and it's possible to walk out onto the icy waters. We know it's safe to do this as the locals have cleared an area for ice skating, so it has been checked. The visible water was so clear, everything just frozen in time. Further down the road is Pyramid Lake, overshadowed by its namesake, Pyramid Mountain, and our resort right on the banks of the lake in a really tranquil setting. I have to say that throughout our trip, we really have enjoyed being just a little out of town, closer to the nature and peace. With most places having on-site restaurants, it's been super easy and the food prices were hardly more than in the center. Lake Pyramid has a small island to explore. It really won't take you more than 15 minutes to walk around it, but it's super cute, quiet, and at this time of year, not too busy. Just a nice place to be as the sun goes down for the evening. So that's it, we've reached the end of our epic Canadian tour. We hope you've enjoyed all of the episodes we've brought you from Whitehorse and Yukon and our off-gridding to Banff and up on top of Sulphur Mountain, which was incredible. And then here in Jasper, when we went to uh, the uh, canyon and uh, did a fantastic walk along that route there. It was incredible as well. So it's been amazing. Thank you for joining us each week. Uh, please do remember to subscribe and we'll be back again really soon with another travel series. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll be back in England with some more of our English stately homes and uh, English countryside videos that you all enjoy too. So take care and we'll see you again soon.